is heating up between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korea leader Kim Jong-un. Trump has bragged about his bigger nuclear button, sparking media speculations about his mental state. World media have widely discussed the developments. The Washington Post writes that the development is an escalation of tensions between North Korea and the United States. The CNN says Trump's remarks has raised questions about Trump's awareness over the destructive power at his command. The New York Times has referred to the peace overture by South Korea, saying it highlights the growing rift between the United States and South Korea. The Australia-based ABC channel says Trump's comments on his bigger nuclear button is likely to spark tensions with North Korea. The South Korea June Gang Daily says the comments have once again highlighted the threat of a nuclear war in the Korean Peninsula. And finally, the Politico writes that President Trump tweets regarding his bigger nuclear button has sparked debates about his mental ability to serve as the commander-in-chief. Here are some viral tweets about President Trump's controversial remarks. Well, President Trump has agreed to meet the leader of North Korea, Kim Jong-un. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders has just confirmed the plans, tweeting that it will happen at a time and place to be determined. Well, the surprise announcement was made earlier by South Korea's National Security Advisor speaking after talks in the White House. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he is committed to denuclearization and he expressed his eagerness to meet President Trump as soon as possible. President Trump appreciated the briefing and said he would meet Kim Jong-un by May to achieve permanent denuclearization. Well, for more on this, we can now cross live to RT's Caleb Morpin in New York. Well, hi there, Caleb. I mean, just recently there was talk of all-out nuclear war and now this dramatic turnaround. I mean, could you bring us the latest? Yes. Now, we heard it from the South Korean delegation to the White House. That was the National Security Director of South Korea who made the initial announcement. And now we have confirmation from the White House press secretary. It appears that at an a unannounced and to-be-determined time and place, apparently it is going to take place before May, uh, that's what we're hearing before May, uh, there will be a meeting between the leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, located in the northern part of the peninsula, and U.S. President Donald Trump. Now, this is quite unprecedented. Um, uh, there has not been a meeting between a U.S. head of state and the leader of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. It simply hasn't happened. Um, and especially in light of recent events, as we've seen, you know, some, some rather heated words exchanged between the two leaders, um, this is what we've seen between Trump and the man he will soon be meeting. This is what we heard. No, I don't think so. The era of strategic patience with the North Korean regime has failed. North Korea does not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury. The U.S. neglects the international community's will to establish peace on the Korean Peninsula. And we can't have madmen out there shooting rockets all over the place. You will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. No one other than Trump himself is on a suicide mission. a sick puppy. Now, um, we also understand that at this time, uh, North Korea will not be engaging in any more uh, ballistic missile tests or 
tests of its nuclear weapons. Um, and at this point, uh, it's quite an interesting development. Now, in the past, we've heard from the United States that the only condition in which they would talk to North Korea is if North Korea were to completely give up its nuclear arsenal. Now, we haven't heard any such, uh, any such offer from North Korea, but it appears that not only will talks resume, but that the head of state of the United States will actually meet with the head of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea and the Korean Workers' Party, Kim Jong-un, uh, the third generation leader of that country. So uh, a, a lot of surprise, uh, not what people were expecting. One of the uh, often observed things about Donald Trump is his unpredictability. And this is a move that many are saying was definitely not predicted. Yeah, it could be history in the making. Caleb Morpin in New York, thank you very much. Thank you. Today, I have the privilege of greeting President Trump on my recent visit to Pyongyang, North Korea. I'd like to thank President Trump, the Vice President, and his wonderful national security team, including my close friend, General McMaster. I explained to President Trump that his leadership and his maximum pressure policy, together with international solidarity, brought us to this juncture. I expressed President Moon Jae-in's personal gratitude for President Trump's leadership. I told President, President Trump that in our meeting, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said he is committed to denuclearization. Kim pledged that North Korea will refrain from any further nuclear or missile tests. He understands that the routine joint military exercises between the Republic of Korea and the United States must continue. And he expressed his eagerness to meet President Trump as soon as possible. President Trump appreciated the briefing and said he would meet Kim Jong-un by May to achieve permanent denuclearization. The Republic of Korea, along with the United States, Japan, and our many partners around the world, remain fully and resolutely committed to the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Along with President Trump, we are optimistic about continuing a diplomatic process to test the possibility of a peaceful resolution. The Republic of Korea the United States and our partners stand together in insisting that we not repeat the mistakes of the past and that the pressure will continue until North Korea matches its words with concrete actions. Thank you. All right, uh, that was a stunning statement. Let's just start with the most stunning part. Uh, that was the uh, National Security Advisor uh, for South Korea, Jong Ho Yong, and he is saying that in his meeting with President Trump, President Trump uh, expressed his eagerness to, um, or, I'm sorry, Kim Jong Un expressed his eagerness to meet President Trump as soon as possible, and President Trump responded saying yes. Not holding it out there whether he will, he said yes, he will meet Kim Jong Un and he will do so by May. That is an incredible thing, and I don't think there's anybody watching this or any expert on, on Korea who expected uh, that response at this time. Pretty stunning. Also, you heard uh, from the National Security Advisor of South Korea a lot of flattery from South Korea to the President of the United States uh, and saying that Kim Jong-un reiterating his position that North Korea would refrain from any more nuclear tests. Okay, there is so much to talk about here. Uh, Sam uh, Vinograd, who worked with President Obama, you've just said this was unprecedented in terms of getting this letter uh, let's just get to, Elise, the response. President Trump comes out and says, yes, I will meet with you. I will do it by May. That's right. I mean, look, President Trump wants to be the, lead, the leader that no, uh, he wants to do what no other leader has done, right? He wants to meet with Kim Jong-un, get a commitment from the North Korean leader. Um, and, you know, good for him for lowering the temperature, this maximum pressure campaign, as you saw mm -hmm. the uh, South Korean envoy flattering President Trump speaking to his, you know, uh, ego a little bit. Um, will someone say ego? Um, and saying, look, your leadership has brought you to this point. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, <clears throat> these talks that the U.S. would have with North Korea, if President Trump were to sit down with Kim Jong-un tomorrow, what would he say? I mean, there's no, and you talk to U.S. officials, yeah. there is no strategy for what they want from North Korea. How would this go? 
these kind of important summits, while it would be historic, you would want to think that it was the groundwork was laid. And, you know, right. he's going to put his advisors and in a very tough position right now to prepare the ground for these talks. It's historic and it's very significant. Might be a little premature. And by the way, the casting couch culture of Weinstein and Spacey and Polanski, and we can go on and on. Here with reaction to last night's show, Fox News contributor, she lives out there, I have no idea why, Tommy Laren. You know, um, I'm watching all this for the little bit until Homeland came on at, at 9 Eastern on Sunday nights, which I never miss. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I, nobody can tolerate this. I knew from the opening four minutes it would be disaster ratings-wise, the lowest ever. Well, it's really perfect what they did last night because, as you know, Sean, an actor is is paid a ridiculous amount of money to pretend to be something that they are not. And all of these individuals in this room, they do that day in and day out. They pretend to be social justice warriors and humanitarians, but really, they're just overpaid hypocrites. And and they're not funny. I think that's the that's the biggest crime here is that they're not funny. They try so hard to be funny, and they're still not funny. Okay. Now, how does the crowd that just a number of years ago literally gives the loudest applause to a guy that drugged a 13-year-old girl and repeatedly raped her. How did that guy get the biggest applause ever? And how are we supposed to believe one word they're saying when they applauded that guy? Because I have no faith in any of them. I think they're all phonies. There is nothing more phony than the Me Too and Time's Up movement when it comes to Hollywood. It should be hashtag we all knew. It should be hashtag we all knew and said nothing until it was trendy to speak up. I think that that's what I have a biggest problem with, is that even those that are interviewing people on the red carpet, those that are in that room, those that are friends with people that, like you said, like Weinstein, they all knew or they had a pretty good idea and they said nothing. They allowed it to continue, but now they dress in a certain color, they wear a pin, they make jokes about it, and some Somehow they think that they're doing the country good. They think that they're doing women good. They think that they're starting some kind of a movement. Yeah. All hypocrites. Oh, did you notice when you pull up in the red carpet in your beautiful uh, Escalade with your armed guards, what did you see? Armed cops, armed SWAT team, arms every... If we're going to if we're gonna secure the perimeter of the Oscars, can't we do that in America's school, Tommy? Well, I think that what's so great about the Second Amendment is it protects those of us that can't afford the luxury of armed security.